Bonjour everyone, Pentouf here today for a new video in which we have the pleasure of talking about the Chieftain MK6. Why? Because since the 9.1 update dropped and with it come several nerfs and buffs, I think that some of you might be lost on which tank they need to acquire. So I decided to just go straight to the point by presenting to you the best tank you can get out of the 9.1 update if you are looking for a heavy tank. I'll do that I think for every single tank since the 9.1 update, every kind of, every classes of tanks, so heavy, medium, light and tank destroyer. And we start with the most common one, the heavies. So why the Chieftain MK6? Because since it's released, this tank never got touched. I remember back in the good old days when I was still a tester, it didn't have any cupolas. That's the only change Wargaming made, because obviously without a cupola, this tank is totally broken. But beside that, this tank has some specs that are making it a great opponent and therefore a great tank to play with. First of all, with its premium status, it means that Wargaming is not allowed, uh, if we take a look at their guidelines, to nerf the tank. They can only buff it. What does it tell you? That if you buy the Chieftain MK6, you have a guarantee that Wargaming will not try to, uh, to stab you from the back. And this is quite a good thing, knowing that Wargaming is not the company I would trust the most. Now, the second thing, these statistics. The Chieftain MK6 is packing everything you need from every single class tank you need. Let me explain. First, let's talk about the gun. It's one of the most accurate of its tier. It's reloading fast, it has a decent alpha damage, and on top of that, it's equipped with a crazy penetration with HE shell, because if I'm not mistaken, it climbs up to 110 mm. Which means that not only are you going to be a real nightmare for your opponents on the battlefield, you can also inflict tons of damage if you use your HE wisely. On top of that, the number of munitions you are carrying with that tank truly allows you to have one third of each munition. If you take a look at my munitions right now, you see that I have 35 regular shells, 28 gold APCR shells, and 20 HE. It's one of the few tanks in the game that has more than 60 shells, and trust me, you are never gonna run out of ammo. Now, for the rest of the statistics, we can talk about the mobility which is the only point where the tank is normal, because it's not even a downside. The mobility on that tank is stuck to 35 km per hour. And it's logic, because this is the kind of things that Wargaming does with the British tanks. I don't know why, but they are not allowed to go too fast. But it's not a problem, because 35 km per hour, knowing that you get to that speed quite fast, allows you to still play aggressively. Not as aggressive as a medium tank, obviously, but aggressive enough to take the right positions. If we take a look at what I did at the beginning of the game here, I went straight to an advanced position, because I literally went on the other side of the map, to the enemy map side. And I still made it in time not to be rushed by mediums, not to be attacked by tank destroyers, etc, etc. And if you use your tank wisely and understand have some map awareness on where you should place yourself at the beginning of every single game, you should not struggle playing with this tank. Now, the last thing to talk about is obviously the armor profile. That tank has a really, really decent turret armor. It's not the best, because unlike an Ice 4 that doesn't have any cupola, this one still has a cupola, but the 10 degrees of gun depression are making up for it. Because with 10 degrees of gun depression and with a rounded turret like the one you have on this tank, if you angle and use your 10 degrees of gun depression, you literally become impossible to penetrate for the vast majority of tanks you are going to encounter. And on top of that, if you use your 10 degrees of gun depression, the enemies will not be able to see your cupola, which means that you don't have any more weak spots. But it's a trap because you can still get penetrated with gold shell from people that are not trying to shoot at your weak spot. As long as they have like maybe 350 millimeters of penetration or something like that. And they really need to hit the perfect spot, which is near the, uh, near the gun on the turret cheeks. But there is practice and there is theory. Yes, in theory, a lot of people can penetrate you using gold shell, even if you're using your 10 degrees of gun depression. But 
in practice, it's really hard because you are always going to move. You, uh, as soon as you shoot your shell, you are going to pull back to a safe cover from which nobody can shoot you, etc, etc. And all of those factors combined make it quite impossible not to penetrate that tank if you are not shooting at the cupola and impossible to penetrate if you are not shooting at the cupola. So in definitive, this tank, statistically talking, is packing everything a heavy player, a medium player, and even a tank destroyer player can hope. DPM, I'm not even going to talk about it, it's above 3k damage, so yeah, that's all I have to say, especially with a tier 10 heavy. And finally, the premium status, because not only are, gonna have, are you going to have a lot of fun with this tank, you are also going to gain a lot of credits, which can be really helpful if you are grinding tanks. And on top of that, you are grinding credits with a freaking tier 10. It's just awesome. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the only tank... Uh, tier 10 tank that has the premium status. I need to verify this, but I think that this was the only tank that uh, got these, uh, this premium status because Wargaming learned uh, soon enough that if they make it premium, they do not have the right to change it. And therefore, if they make something broken, it's going to keep being broken. But here you see that with the Chieftain, we can play quite aggressively. We can take ourselves to the right positions. And we can make a lot of credits because what you're about to see is just godly 320,000 credits. It's, it's what I need. It's what I need and it's what I want. So what's the price? Because that's a premium. And here is the good news. I know most of you will tell me that maybe that it's expensive, but let's take a look. And this is the great example at the AMX M4 MLE 54 in the shop. This tank is a collectible. And if I'm not mistaken, in the 9.1 update, this tank got nerfed. We're going to verify all together. But if it was nerfed, it's for a reason. It's a collectible and not a premium. Look at this. The AMX M4 MLE 54 got touched, right? And the Chieftain MK6, not at all. I told you, it's its premium status that makes it untouchable by Wargaming, and this is why the vast majority of tanks that are coming at tier 10 now uh, that you have to buy are collectible, so Wargaming can change them. And this is the great advantage of the Chieftain. You have it that way, it's gonna stay that way, so if you get it and you know how to play it, you will be broken on the battlefield all the time. So make sure to grab your wallet and as soon as the Chieftain MK6 enters the shop, buy it. Because here you see an AMX M4 MLE 54 that was, in my opinion, before the 9.1 a better tank than the Chieftain and after the 9.1 a worse tank than the Chieftain at 30,000 gold. And the Chieftain is going to come back at 20,000 gold, even 15,000 gold because sometimes we have those offers for the tank. So yeah, Watch your gold, try to gather as much as possible, and when you hit the final step of 20,000, hold it, hold it, hold it, and as soon as you see the Chieftain, buy it, because you're not going to be disappointed. That thing here is the new crazy meta heavy tank, and to be fair with you, it was always a meta tank. See ya.